Created by Pablo Gonzalez and CS Prince, the hijacking of Flight 601 starring Johan De Vera, Arifes Kenchen and Monica Lopeda in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the hostage thriller miniseries releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot. The series begins with flight attendant Edelma Perez and focuses heavily on her life as a single mother of three children. Balancing her job and her motherly duties often overwhelmed Edelma, but after her husband abandoned her and her children, she had no choice but to continue working a full-time job. We saw her struggling a lot to get to her job on time after preparing her kids for school. One of them even loses a tooth and Edelma gets late to get on her flight on time. Her friend come colleague Barbara refuses to board the plane on her behalf, but she promises to help Edelma while boarding. However, the traffic prevented her from reaching the flight on time which left Bogota and she momentarily lost her job. The nervous new flight attendant Marisol was given the responsibility of taking care of all the needs of the 43 passengers on board and being a fresher, it was not surprising that she failed to take care of her job entirely. However, soon two assailants draw out their guns and point them to Marisol. On her first day of work, she had to witness the worst case scenario for a flight attendant and soon she lost consciousness when the hijackers pushed her to the edge of her mental limit. The hijackers demanded a huge chunk of money, precisely 200k as ransom, to release the passengers safely. While naming the demands to the respective authority, Captain Wilches decides to ask the airline to send another flight attendant as the only flight attendant on board was unconscious. The situation with the passengers was spiraling out of control and he believed that trusting the crew members on board was crucial to dealing with the crisis. He wanted to calm the situation down and keep everything in order, otherwise everything would go haywire and some innocent passengers might die in the ordeal. The hijackers posing as revolutionaries fighting for the rights of the oppressed forced Captain Wilches to land the plane in Medellin to refuel before leaving for Cuba. Edilma had lost her job that morning and had a family to support. When the director announced that they needed a volunteer to board the hijacked plane, she immediately agreed. She didn't know what she was signing up for, all she cared about at the moment was taking care of her children. And in order to do that, she needed to be able to maintain her composure and retain her job. Edelma didn't expect Barbara to come with her, but somehow the sweet-talking colored woman managed to convince the mother of three to let her accompany her. Barbara wanted to take care of Edelma and she also wanted to experience the thrill of getting on a hijacked plane. The flight attendants had with them the aeronautical charts requested by the pilot. While Captain Wilches was being made to believe they were going to Cuba, the hijackers suddenly announced that their next destination was Aruba. When the news of the hijacking became public, the Colombian government announced that they were unwilling to negotiate with the revolutionaries. They refused to give them the space to make demands, even if it meant putting the lives of innocent hostages at risk. The director of the Aero Bolivar Piratek believed that it was their duty to negotiate with the hijackers to ensure the safe return of the passengers. With the airline's reputation at stake, he felt he needed to take some responsibility instead of relying on the government's decision. He was probably the only Aero Bolivar employee who genuinely cared about the well-being of the hostages and he tried to convince the airline's owner Dr. Chavariaga to hand over the money demanded by the hijackers in exchange for the release of all the passengers and crew members. However, it will be a mistake to tell that he was completely clean and did not have any ulterior motives. It was his ambition for the longest time to sit on the top of the hierarchy pyramid of the company. Meanwhile, Edilma convinces a passenger to fake a pregnancy to force the hijackers to release her. But this backfired and Toro and Boya, the hijackers demanded 400k instead of 200. After repeated negotiations with the kidnappers, Piratek managed to convince them to release the women and children in exchange for 200k. And finally, Toro and Boya agreed. Piratek rejected President Misal Pastrana's decision and went ahead to give the money to the kidnappers as they threatened to kill the hostages if he didn't keep his word. He felt compelled to save the reputation of the company anyhow and that is why he ignored the advice of his superior. 
Meanwhile, a first class passenger refused to share her premium toilet with the people from second class. When Barbara confronted her, she started shouting racial slurs and Barbara retaliated breaking the basic law of an air hostess which is to keep a smiling face all the time despite being mistreated by the passengers. Through the flight attendants back stories, the makers made them more relatable and unlike what other people may perceive about their lives, these hard working women are extremely underpaid. As an indigenous woman, Maria Eugenia Gallo, aka Barbara's biggest struggle was being treated as an equal in her work. She had made compromises her whole life and in a strange way the hijacking would help her realize what she wanted out of her life but we will get to that later. In the meantime the crew came up with a plan to free the passengers. There was a hidden exit at the tail of the plane and they planned to drag the hijackers out to escape through the exit. But the plan didn't work as they imagined. Piratek arrived at the airport and initially offered them 50k to free a few more passengers. The duo agreed to the deal. The joy on their faces when they got their hands on the money made it clear that they were not guerrillas and that the money was only intended for them and not for the revolution. Through an entire episode we learned that Ulysses and Toro were struggling athletes from Paraguay, eager to make it in life. When coach Don Pacho told Toro he had been selected by a first division soccer team La Gloriosa, he became extremely happy. But Pacho wouldn't let him play unless he paid his debt. Ulysses was willing to risk himself to see Toro happy and that was the moment he met Checho. He slept with Checho in order to get the money Toro needed to pay the debt. While leaving Checho's apartment, he found some revolutionary literature that eventually influenced him greatly. Checho even told Ulysses that while he was and only wished to become wealthy, the rich get richer and he struggled to get one decent meal a day. Their lives changed dramatically after Toro broke his foot during a crucial match. It was the only chance he had to prove himself, but luck was not in his favor. He was kicked out of the academy for hiding his injury before the match. Ulysses and Toro ended up with Checho. Pacho had their passports and personal belongings and they needed them to continue their lives. So the trio broke into the academy that night and got everything they needed. Checho was full of adrenaline and was convinced that he was a true revolutionary. Incredibly, while they were celebrating their success, Toro accidentally pulled the trigger of the gun he was holding and Checho was killed instantly. Ulysses and Toro had nowhere to go and no one to be with. They needed money to survive and thanks to Checho, they also realized that they could hijack a plane and pretend to be guerrillas to make it look professional. This is how the hijacking plan was born. They wanted to be taken seriously and align their beliefs with those of the revolutionaries, which is why they pretended to be guerrillas. It worked for the most part but Edelman understood soon that they were only pretending to be concerned about the revolution. Ulysses and Toro were overconfident about their operation and insulted Captain Wilches who had previously advised them to work hard instead of complaining about their poverty. The captain was furious and threw Ulysses to the ground. Some passengers grabbed Toro while the others escaped through the secret door. Most of the passengers escaped alive and only a few were trapped. Edilma also attempted to escape but unfortunately Toro and Ulysses brought the situation back under control. The plan began to fail when every country they wanted to land in refused to allow them entry. Low on fuel, Wilches requests a landing in Peru despite not being given permission to land. The Peruvian police provide them with fuel and ask them to leave. Seeing no way out, Toro and Ulysses decide to end the hijacking and flee with the money they received. They ask the police for a car while Eddie threatens them at gunpoint. This leads to a shootout in which Toro is shot. Now they could either fly to Bogota where they would either be killed straight or arrested or land in the Atacama Desert. Meanwhile, Esqueda, the vice minister, threatens Piratek to accept that he was involved with the hijack. For Manchola's sake whom he loved and was his secretary, Piratek has no choice but to agree. Ulysses orders Wilchers to transport them to Antofagasta. Wilchers must now land the plane in a desert which seems an impossible task. However, the captain decides to take them to Bogota without informing the hijackers. And Esqueda prepares to attack the plane as soon as it lands. Piratek refused to risk the lives of the crew and passengers so he informs Wilchers of Esqueda's plan, which leads to his arrest. While Wilchers ignores Piratek's warning, his co-pilot Lequerica tells Eddie about it. But it seems even Adilma's threat to reveal his plan to the hijackers cannot deter Wilchers. Soon after, Ulysses, who has learned to trust Barbara, confides in her and Barbara realizes that Ulysses never killed the passengers whom he claimed to have killed previously. All he did was lock him in a trapdoor. Eddie and Barbara then save the passenger and convince Ulysses to surrender in Bogota. However, when Toro realizes that Ulysses lied to him, he decides to blow up the plane with a grenade if Wilches does not turn back. But even then, the captain refuses to take orders from them. Eddie is forced to threaten Wilches at gunpoint, but Wilches knows it is an empty threat, prompting her to stab him in the thigh. 
let Rika is then asked to take control of the plane by the stewardess. She talks seriously to Toro and convinces him to defuse the grenade now that they are not flying to Bogota. Let Rika removes the plane from the radar and takes Toro and Ulysses to Desistencia as they wished. Toro and Ulysses want to take Eddie and Barbara with them to ensure that Lekrika will not tell the authorities where they went for the next 72 hours. However, Eddie convinces them to take Wilches instead since he is the captain and his life is more valuable than theirs. Wilches is forced to leave with Toro and Ulysses. Lekrika then takes the plane to Bogota and both the remaining passengers and crew members are rescued, with the exception of Wilches who disappears along with the hijackers. Lekrika, Eddie and Barbara are interrogated by Esguida, but they refuse to tell him where Wilches and the hijackers landed. Eddie created a story to protect her fellow crew members. She tells Esguida that Wilches was stabbed by the hijackers, leaving him unable to fly the plane. She also tells him that Wilches made a deal with the hijackers that he would get off the plane with them in exchange for the lives of the crew and passengers. But she eventually reveals to Esguida where the hijackers landed when he threatens to separate her from her children. Toro and Ulysses got separated in Asuncion with Toro returning to his family. Ulysses does not kill Wilches but frees him. Once Wilches is rescued, Esquira questions him and Wilches confirms that his story as a story make him seem like a hero who sacrificed himself for others. Eri is no longer under surveillance and is reunited with her children. Despite having children, she was allowed to continue working at Aero Bolivar until she was fired three years later for alcohol smuggling. Piratek is sentenced to 17 months in prison. He and Manchola confess their love for each other and get married before he passes his sentence. After being released from prison, he moves to Guaduas with his secretary and decides to no longer work in the aerospace sector. Wilches is rewarded for his courage. He continues to fly until he dies in a plane crash seven years later. Barbara, who had to hide a true identity and name to work as a flight attendant, decides to quit a job when she finds clarity after facing near death. She flies to Brazil to meet Ulysses because she also felt for him, call it Stockholm Syndrome or anything but she looked happy reuniting with him. To the rest of the world, Ulysses has disappeared and is never captured. On the other hand, Toro who returned to Asuncion and distributed the money to his friends and family is arrested. He was extradited to Colombia where he was sentenced to 5 years in prison. After being released, he dies while robbing a bank. In the credits, it is mentioned that another hijacker might still be alive. If you expected the hijacking of Flight 601 to be just about violence and action, you might be shocked as the series provides much more. Aside from the thrilling hijacking plot, the series provides an engaging depiction of the passengers and crew's traumatic journey. Monica Lopira's captivating performance elevates the series. During times of difficulty, Ariel Ma's character emerges as altruistic and compassionate, valuing the passengers' safety and well-being over her own. The portrayal of Ulysses is nuanced and multifaceted as well, skillfully portrayed by actor Valentin Valafne. What distinguishes the series with the rest is its attention to the human side of the story. In addition to the compelling hijacking plot, the series dives deeply into the characters' personal lives, revealing the anxieties, aspirations and the enduring relationships of friendship that grow in the face of tragedy. The series does a good job of depicting the historical setting of the hijacking, delving into the political and socio-economical situation of Colombia in 1973. This gives viewers a better picture of the circumstances that led to the hijacking. These episodes of human connection lend complexity to the story, lifting it above a simple recital of historical events. Despite several scenes that may temporarily relieve stress, the series eventually builds to an astonishing conclusion in which some passengers are finally assured of their safety. Overall, the hijacking of Flight 601 is a compelling watch. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the hijacking of Flight 601 on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to your channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing, we're signing off. Adios and I'll be back.